Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to a new episode of Beyond Dressing Well Live. And tonight we are going to do a whole segment on winter coats. So it's called Welcome Coat Season and we're going to cover it all. Before I dive too deeply into the program, and boy do I have a lot to cover, I'm going to talk really, really fast, um, a couple of announcements at the top of the hour. First of all, a big shout out to Sarah Zango, Jen Coletti, and Kathy Smith, our amazing stylists. They are getting top results for the students in our uh, current 90 Days to Stellar Style program. They are working with our last 2021 cohort, and I was reviewing some of the feedback today, and it's just stellar. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to them. Hello, Ann Grosha. Hello, Doreen. And I see that Sarah is popping on too, and I also see Diane Webster. So hello to all of my friends out there. Um, and I also wanted to announce that our first session of Stellar Style uh, for 2022. We're enrolling right now and it kicks off on January 17th. So if it's something you've been thinking about, you want to get the new year off on a great start, DM me, get on my calendar. You know the routine. I am happy to talk to anyone in this group at any time about their style and how this program or really any of our programs can really help you achieve your style goals. Also wanted to let you know we have a new blog up. It went up today, our November blog, and well, it's welcome coat season, one of the reasons why we're doing this program tonight. So Sarah's gonna get that up if you missed it. And our gift certificate packages for 2021 were finalized this week, and those went live on the site too. So we are in full gift certificate mode. If you'd like a gift certificate, again, DM me, DM Sarah, go on the website. Sarah will get a link up there. Uh, we have some phenomenal programs. We do, we offer uh, gift certificates for both virtual and in-person consultations. And the last announcement, announcement that I wanted to make, which ties in beautifully to our program tonight, is the 23rd annual, I think it's 23rd or 24th annual Coats for Kids and Families is running now. I'm on the board of uh, Caring Partners, which runs this amazing program. Many of you know that I'm good friends with Arthur Anton, a member of the Anton Dry Cleaning family. They run uh, both Coats for Kids and Bell the Ball, and their annual coat drive is going on right now. So as you get inspired to maybe add a few new coats, go through your coat closet, um, Please, uh, if you don't live in the Boston area, uh, Google Coat Drives in your area. Uh, it's a great way to feel really good about getting the things that you're no longer wearing into the hands of others. So in Boston, Coats for Kids, uh, the collection, uh, the drop-offs are any Anton's Dry Cleaners. They have 42 in the greater Boston and New Hampshire area. Any Jordan's Furniture, you can drop off your coats, and you can also get them to any Enterprise Bank. And Anton's Dry Cleans every single coat, and we'll have to get Arthur back on to explain just what an amazing service that is to our community. So please keep that in mind as we go through our journey tonight on the hanging of the coat closet. What are some of the styles that you want to <laughs> add or pay attention to right now? But again, as you know, a big part of our philosophy is repurposing things that no longer serve you well, and coat drives are a great way to do that. All right, so before we get into the style presentation and the fashion show and tell, and I literally emptied out my coat closet for you guys, I also hit the mall today because I am a cuckoo person, just so that I could see what was out there. I bought a couple things to show you. If you didn't see the video yet, I had a video go up on Instagram right around um, 4.30 today. It's also on our Facebook page, and I also shared it to the group, but I did share some of the items that I found at the mall, but most of the things that I'm going to show you tonight are things that have been in my closet for a really long time. I find that, although Fashion's where you find it, and you can get amazing deals. 
certainly coat sales are in uh, are starting to really um, be quite even when I was at the store today I couldn't believe the bargains that I saw typically coat sales start right around Columbus Day uh, but they are in high gear right now and if you are looking for a new coat I do highly recommend that you pounce now because once January comes you can still find deals but a lot of the stuff is picked over so what we do in our company, if we are working with you as a private client or you are a member of any of our group training programs, when it comes to the coat conversation, what I like to do is get in that coat closet before we buy anything, before we even think about what might be needed. And if you don't have one of our racks yet, many of you have bought them, I highly recommend, Sarah will get the link up in the chat, this portable packing rack. You've heard me mention it before, you've seen me demonstrate it, I'll demonstrate it again. I, I cannot work with somebody in their coat, that, that's a little bit of exaggeration. I can always do anything when I put my mind up to it. But I prefer to look at somebody's coats and go through their coat closet when I have my rack with me. So our rack folds up, and fold down pretty easily. Do yourself a favor if you do choose to buy it. They're very affordable. Get yourself the bag with it. I think the bag and the rack is 130. We are selling, you know, it's, it's holiday, so maybe that's even a great gift to get yourself or for somebody else. But I can't tell you how helpful the rack is for any kind of closet organizing, but particularly the coat closet. Also, if you're entertaining, if you have people coming for the holidays, these coat racks are awesome. You can pop them up and you can use them to hang coats. So that's my little moment on the rack. You all know that I love the rack. The next thing that I do when I'm going through the coats is I get a hanging system. And for years, so funny, I was reading the book. Sarah, we have not given away a book in a while. Let's give away a book tonight. Um, so if you don't have the book already, uh, put in the chat why you would like to have it, and uh, we will we will um, send out a book. We'll do two books. Two people will read the book. Just, all you have to do is put in the chat uh, why you deserve the book. But I was reading the book, and our methodology is laid out so beautifully in that book. I sometimes forget what I wrote, but I really love what I wrote about that. I have a section in there called The Hanging of the Coat Closet. So for years, I have used these tubular hangers in my main coat closet, my dressier coat closet. And then in my back hall with kind of the raincoats and the more casuals, I've always used white. The container store doesn't have these anymore, so I'm going to have to hit Harvey's and Needham Center and see if they do um, go online. But I love, you know, these strong tubular, and I love that um, how it just makes the closet more organized. I also love how you can hang a scarf on this tube, tubular style. And hello, Eileen Murphy, and put it right back in the closet. So I'll get to that. But those are my tools. Those are the only tools that I use. And a lot of my clients think I'm nuts, but I often never leave uh, a consultation, especially in the winter, without going through the, the, the newly hung outfits and making sure that there's coats that connect. Because remember, our whole philosophy is style confidence, fast and easy. You gotta go slow to go fast, slow to go fast. And when you take the time to undo the closet, and really it's the easiest closet typically to get under control, because there's usually only coats in there, and you set it back up and you categorize it, not only do you shop more efficiently because you can go right to that closet and start to identify what might be missing, it also trains you when it's organized to say, I'm wearing this really nice dress today. I can wear my red wool coat that's a little bit more fitted with this dress. So it starts to really help you put that whole style together. And for those of you that have been in our world for a while, you've heard me say this a thousand times and I'll say it again, outerwear should not be an afterthought. Outerwear should not be an afterthought, especially here in New England. And for somebody, uh, you all know that I love clothes, but I also really get rid of things. I really have a manageable wardrobe. I have more coats. My coats, I have 
more in that category than in some other categories of my wardrobe. I can put on this dress and put my red coat, my black coat, my puffer. I can do a vest with this dress. There's many ways, so I love the option of having, especially in the winter time, many different coat styles to finish off my look. And as you'll see in a moment, when I get to the show and tell, I have some, I've had some of these coats in my world for 30 years, honestly. So that gets me into the fit. Um, before you, you know, when you're organizing, you take everything out, you try everything on, just like our regular philosophy. The only things that go back in that closet are, I love it. It fits my lifestyle today. You know, if you're no longer going into an executive office five days a week, you probably don't need as many dressy coats. Um, I happen to like dressy coats, so I kind of keep those. But you know what I mean. If you're home with children, you probably need more casual coats. If you travel a lot, you probably need a few transitional coats. So you're going in and you're doing the same philosophy. Do I love it and I wear it? I love it, but it doesn't fit. I love it, but the zipper's broken. You're making a plan so that everything in there serves you today. And then you're tapping into coat drives, giving coats to, you know, for years I gave my coats to my babysitter. When something didn't work for me, I moved it along to her. So that's, and then getting it organized, and I just shared with you my little hanger system. Kind of crazy, but it works. Um, and then for the fit, a lot of times coats can be very expensive and even if you get them on sale, it's a bummer when you don't love your coat. So a couple of uh, rules of thumb that we use day in and day out is you want to put the coat on and you want to do the driving test to make sure your arms can move in it. Sometimes I, I, I sit there and make people do, pretend they're jump roping just to make sure that it's comfortable because you're in your, you know, here in New England, we're wearing coats from pretty much November to April. So you wanna be able to move in it. And then you've gotta have a conversation, you know, do I wear jackets underneath my coats? Like how much room do I need? Um, and then of course, your fit. And we work with a very broad range of si sizes here in our firm. We work with a lot of petites, a lot of plus size. So understanding how the style elements, we won't have too much time to get into that, but that's what our Stellar Style program does so beautifully, is it said these are the categories that you need based on your lifestyle and what you like, and we're gonna help you really nail the fit. We're gonna help you train your eye to understand the style elements that, it, that help your presence or diminish your presence. But you know, a couple things like, you know, your sleeve shouldn't be coming down to the bottom of your fingers. Sometimes coats can be altered, sometimes they can't. I remember working with a woman who had this beautiful coat and it had zippers and we really just couldn't alter it. Um, you know, where are the pocket placements? How does it button? I rarely let somebody walk out of the store if this coat doesn't button. They'll say, I'm not gonna wear it buttoned, but I wanna make sure it fits. Sometimes if it fits here, a lot of times I'll get, and somebody is carrying your weight down here, we'll get a beautiful coat that fits at the neck, has beautiful buttons, and it might have a little bit of a fit and flare look. So again, try the coats on. If you can't fix them, remove them, and then focus on what you might need, all right? I don't think I missed anything. That really is our philosophy. Um, and again, the book spells it out pretty well. And I also, I'm looking at my notes over here. I also do a lot with color and layering. I layer my winter coats. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, but if you read the blog today, and Sarah did an amazing job. She, she sourced all those photos. Do yourself a favor and pop over to there and look at the blog. The photos are, are alone worth looking at the blog, they're gorgeous. But this tonight's program is on winter coats, not the transitional or the spring, but on winter coats. And we profiled in the blog, we did wool puffers, 
the faux fur teddy coats that are everywhere. We also put in their wraps and shawls, because I'll show you how we layer those. And then Sarah came up with a new word for me, codigans. I was reading, I'm like, what is a codigan? So I Googled it. And a codigan is for those of you who don't live in, in quite as frigid a climate as we do here in New England. Um, it's those lighter, it's part sweater, part coat. I'll show you the ones that I have. Um, that might be all that you need. I know I go visit my sister in Dallas a lot in the month of December, and a lot of times I wear my coat again. Now I know the word for that. <laughs> I didn't know it before. Um, and the other thing um, in terms of, of coats, like even leather coats. I wear my shorter leather coats right up until November. And then, of course, we do have some really warm days. It's supposed to be really warm here tomorrow. I might still wear my leathers. I might wear my coat again. But I have like a long leather coat that I sometimes wear because it gives me more coverage. Okay? So I think I got um, that out there. Again, I went to the mall today. I could not believe the amount of puffer coats that are out there and the amount of the teddy coats and the faux the faux furs. There is something for everyone. There's something at every price point. I got some of, I got my favorite teddy coat at Zara three years ago. I got um, my beautiful coat that I had on the video today that I'll show you again is a DVF. I bought that at Bloomingdale's and have loved it. And one of my favorite faux furs I got at a consignment store when I was in college and I'm still wearing that. All right, so without further ado, I know you all tune in for this fashion show and tell, but I feel like I'd be doing a disservice without giving you some of our guiding principles and our methodology before we kick it off. So I will dive into my wool coats because I love my wool coats. Sarah and I both have, we both love how classic, how dressed you feel when you have a beautiful wool coat on. So I'll show you what I have there. All right, I told you that I dumped my entire coat closet out today, and I did. So when I'm working, and I'll give you a little bit of my philosophy. Hello, Carol Yarmantino, I see you popping in. Um, when I work with a private client, I almost always um, like to make sure they have a nice black wool coat. This is mine. It is one of the best purchases I ever made. I did get this at Saks Fifth Avenue a long time ago. And as is the case with a lot of my wool coats, I sometimes get them when I have an event. And I remember I was going to a Dress for Success Boston event in January. It was freezing and I needed a really good warm coat. So this is cashmere. And that's another thing I wanted to to. Uh, just kind of raise your attention to. There's a reason why some winter coats cost more. Again, you can find them at consignment stores. You can get things on sale. But when they, this is cashmere. It's super warm. And it is, this is literally 10 years old. So it has stood the test of time. When they have a lot of nylon in, the, if it's wool mixed with nylons, you're going to get that scratchy feel. And it's just not going to be as warm. So a lot of times I start with black. I'm a belted girl. Not everybody is, but I like a belted coat. So that was a full price purchase. I have bought this coat for several people and I love it. The next one is the red one I had on in the video today. It is one of my favorites. It looks so nice with this dress that I have on today. Um, I had it on the video and I have a beautiful scarf that I put with it. And I love when I can find, um, once I, the basics are covered, I love when I can find a color for a client. I also love getting a nice black and white print. This is a, another uh, Diane Von Furstenstein. I love the cut of her coat. And a funny story about this. I wore this to death with a black dress, sleeveless black dress and a turtleneck and some really cool boots. I had an opportunity to go into New York, this has got to be eight or nine years ago, to meet with the What Not to Wear folks. Uh, Stacy, what was her name? I didn't meet with her, but I met with her CEO. They, were, they interviewed me for a job, which was so funny. It was in 2008 when the world was falling apart, and they reached out to me, and I'm somebody that always 
goes on an adventure. So I went in and I met with her CEO. It was an awesome conversation. We're still connected on LinkedIn. Unfortunately, they um, their business venture, they were gonna go into malls and offer uh, personal shopping and kiosks. And they wanted, they were interested in having me be their VP of sales and marketing or something like that. Didn't take the job. Super interesting people to meet. But it was a really cold day. I took the train into New York and I had this coat on. I had on this super cool dress, um, flat but beautiful boots, and I just felt like a million bucks. So I bought this this particular. I was, you know, kind of nervous going into New York and meeting with those folks. And I, at the time, hadn't had a job interview in a very long time. Um, but that's my story on this coat, and I've worn it to death. It's one of the favorite, my favorite pieces in my my wardrobe. I bought this one is my new favorite. I love having. Camel. I do not have a camel coat right now. I wrote a beautiful chapter in the book actually about my camel coat that I wore into New York again when my kids were really little. Four, I think they were four. We brought them by train into New York City. So I wore it. I had a camel coat and a brick red turtleneck. But I found this one. This is BCBG. I found this on the sale rack right before the pandemic. And I wore it to my son John's, um, some of you might have seen it on my Instagram, um, his senior day. They honored the parents on the field. And I just, it just felt great. It's a little bit lighter. I bought it literally like three days before the world ended uh, as a way, I didn't know the world was ending in the pandemic, but I had bought it to help me get through March and April. And it's got the camel. So I wear it right now. Um, like when I went to John's game, I had on a camel turtleneck with it. So I just love that. I'm having a lot of fun wearing that. Hello, Ann Keating. Um, and then this is an oldie but goodie. Sarah Zengo has seen this on me 1,000 times. But this was a little coat that I bought at the old Filene's. Remember Filene's? It was in Chestnut Hill. And to my point, it was it's a Ralph Lauren. Um, I love the scarf that I always put this, I love print on print. This is one of the oldest pieces in my wardrobe. And those of you who are from Needham, you all know that I love Jimmy the Tailor, who was one of my buddies. I had Jimmy and he yelled at me. He didn't want to do it. But I had him take, the sleeves were too long. And I had him shorten it and then I had him actually move. See that pretty detail? I had him move the, um, the little detail here. I had him, I don't know if I'm making sense, but. It, he had to literally remake this coat. So I think I got it on sale for under $100. And by the time the alterations were done, you know, I think the alterations cost me another 50. But I have enjoyed this. I wore this to death with a bottle green knit dress. Um, and this will be something that I never, um, ever give up. And it's big enough that I can get a jacket under it if I have to. So that, those are my wool coats. And then I found this little guy is another one that I picked up. Very inexpensive. And I wore this to our company Christmas party because I had a navy dress. And with the gray and red, it looked really great. Okay, so I am, I still got 10 minutes with you guys. So I'm going to go fast, fast, fast. So that's the wool story. Remember that you often get what you pay for. Look at the percentage of wool versus polyester and nylon. Make your decision accordingly. I know, you know, back in the day when I couldn't afford cashmere, I was going to consignment stores and things like that. And then I also just love this scarf. Um, this is Burberry. It's one of my favorite things in my wardrobe. And when I went into New York, I can't remember, Sarah probably knows that, gal's name, the what not to wear. I actually wore the scarf uh, with this this coat. This is like the scarf that just always works with everything. It even works on, with what I have on today. So that's another thing I wanted to let you know is you all know my color philosophy. This time of year, I do a lot with cranberry in the red. So it's easy to pick up little, like this has been in my wardrobe since I was in college. And you know, I pull it out. Um, I bought this at a craft fair and I knew because of the the purple, the kind of the cranberries and the gold, it would go with everything that I have. Um, you know, these red gloves were a gift from Elizabeth Fergala, one of our stylists. And you know, gloves are just such a great gift. So I look at color, layering, 
now I'll get into the puffers because I think the puffers and the faux furs are the biggest trend of the moment. Again, I went over to the mall and I couldn't buy out the mall because it's hard to buy coats and then return coats. But I went from Nordstrom, I was over at Natick Mall. I went from Nordstrom to the, the Gap had, I think, some of the best puffer coats for the price. Banana Republic had great ones. I did go into Macy's just because I was doing the whole mall and I found that a lot of them have like um, Michael Kors logos, DKNY logos. I'm not too much of a logo person, but they had beautiful coats as well. And again, if you do need some coats, pounce on it now because the way that the market's working is they'll, once, they're not gonna keep replenishing like they used to back in the day. So here's what I found for puffers. So my husband just said, are you done? I'm like, I just got started. <laughs> so what I discovered is I actually have room uh, in my wardrobe for a new puffer. So I've had this one for a really long time and this one comes out when it's super, super cold. And I wear this, you know, January, February, walking my dog last year. Sarah can put it up in the chat. I got this, you know, white was so in. I got the, this is from Peach. Um, but I bought this for everybody on our team because I just loved it. And it just really perked up the black coat. So I always start, you're seeing a trend here. When I introduce a new category into my wardrobe, I often do start with, with black. Then a couple years ago, I got this cute little puffer, very inexpensive, but I love that the back, you know, it's got the zippers here. Um, this is like something I throw on, I can pack it. By the way, because I've done so much travel this fall, I put coats in like tote, like my kids have um, L.L. Bean tote bags with their names on it. I use those because I just love throwing those in there. Um, so I got that. Um, and then this was one of the new ones that caught my eye today. So there's lots of new shapes. And you guys know that I love yellow. So I grabbed this. This is from Banana. And what I thought was so cool about this, I would never seen this before. There's these straps. And the reason they have the straps is you're supposed, this is the concept, you put it on. <laughs> if I don't strangle myself here, you put it on. And then, like if you're, you know, you got the coat on. I'm not gonna put the whole, you know, you got the coat on. And then if you're out to dinner or something, you just, instead of, you just take, you, you have the straps on. And then you don't have to leave your coat on the back of your chair. That was a new one for me, so that's why I grabbed this coat. But I saw this at Banana. Um, all of you that have been on these calls for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of Uniglow. They have some of the most lightweight down. I love their vests, I love their coats. Um, I was gonna, uh, that's on my list. I wanna get one of the Cocoon. They didn't, they didn't have it in a color that I wanted, so I didn't get it. I should've got it to show you, but the Cocoon style's really in. It's more, the other thing that I saw all over the place was the puffer scarves. So the cocoon style is kind of like, kind of hangs a little bit more. I don't know if I'm making sense, Google it. But um, this also came from Banana. And I grabbed it, and I'm actually gonna keep this because I think it's gonna really update a couple of, it's gonna make some of my wool coats look a little bit more casual. And the other thing that I saw was a lot of these like puffer bags. So tote bags that were really cute. There was one in white, but I was like, do I really need a white puffer bag? I was gonna buy it for you guys, but I didn't. Um, so the puffers, long, short, wide, cropped. The Gap had a metallic one that was gorgeous. It was a bronze metallic. I saw a lot of red, a ton at H&M, a ton at Zara. Um, saw a really pretty hunter green one at J. Crew. So I just like ran them all. I only bought this today and I did buy one teddy coat. So that's all I'm gonna say on puffers. What are we, how are we doing on time? I'm gonna go a little bit longer because I, I did prepare for you guys today. So then, these are, the puffer 
fur coats that I wanted to show you. I mean, the faux fur coats. So I bought this one pre-pandemic, and I don't even know if I can wear it anymore. This is from Zara, but this was when the Teddy coats first started coming out. And this just reminds me of the pandemic, because I wore this every day to walk my Suzy Q, and it was so warm. And I still grab it, because it's so comfortable. So that's the Teddy coat. And then I found this one today, and this is going to a very special client. This is a plus size one that I found at Nordstrom, and this was $139, not even on sale, that was the price. And it's just fabulous. I just, I love the pocket placement, I love the length, and I'm hoping this is gonna fit my clients. I'm really happy about that. And then this is one that I got a gazillion years ago and it's it's leopard print and I wear this a ton I ha actually wore this to the mall today and two people said I really like your coat so there you go so those are my foes I do have a real shirling but I'm not going to show you that because I want to show you this whole concept of coat against before we wrap up which was again a new one for me and uh, I just wanted to show you that the other thing just in terms of, we did a whole um, program on winter accessories last week. So if you missed it, it's definitely, you can find the replay. But these bucket hats are, I'm just loving bucket hats. So last week I was away from my son's last game at Middlebury College. It was pouring rain. So I wore the bucket hat. I had on a raincoat. I had on my puffer. So I wanted to show you that. And I also got this little Burberry, but I'm so annoyed because they left the uh, security thing on it. But I have this coat. I am literally climbing over coats. I have, this is, this is the, the beauty of really going through your coat closet before you shop. I've had this in my wardrobe for a really long time. I don't wear it much, but it's real Burberry. I got the scarf when I was in London and I found the hat and I thought, oh, how adorable. I will now wear the coat again. So this will be something that I'll wear, you know, maybe tomorrow when it's mild, maybe when it's raining. But that's what I mean when you really go through your coat closet. I haven't worn this in a while, but when I saw the bucket hat, which I love when I get the security tag off of it, um, it's gonna make me wear it again. So I love when I repurpose things. And so the four years that my beautiful child John played football, this was my puffer coat that I wore and I always layered it with a vest for extra warmth. So this doesn't, I put this together. I must have wore this with the tough scarf that you guys have seen on me. What am I gonna do next fall when there's no football? Um, so anyway, I just want to show you how I layer. And for the game that he just had, it was freezing. I wore this little green. You guys know I love the olive green. And I put my little vest that I love. It's warm. This jacket is very fitted. I can't get much under it, but with the vest, it just looked really sharp. So I wore this on Sunday because it was really cold up in Vermont. Uh, and I had on um, a pair of gloves that really coordinated. And I had on a pair of olive green boots. All right. So the last part of the program, and then we're wrapping up, is the codigans. So again, Sarah educated me on this. And she said, you must have some in your closet. And I said, of course I do. So I went... Did a deep dive. And this is what I came up with. So I first of all wanted to thank Sarah because this is one of my fa all time favorite codigans. And I forgot that I had it. Um, and this is from Ireland. I didn't go to Ireland to get it, but it was at a little shop in Concord and I got it years ago, and I put it on yesterday, and it goes so great with this scarf, everything goes with the scarf, and it's got brown buttons, and I have brown boots, so um, thank you, Sarah, because you've sent me into my closet that I don't go in all that much, and I found it, and 
my other, and this is actually a great way to, to leave the program tonight, um, because it, again, it just speaks to our philosophy so, philosophy so beautifully. This is a codigan that my mother-in-law gave me for Christmas. And again, you see when you, you know, when, the minute I saw it, I was like, it's a little big, so I put a really big belt with it to kind of shrink it. But this is my little hat. I'll put it on for you. I have had this since college. I don't even know where I got it. But, you know, with the hat, do I look like a silly person here? And this, and in terms of outfit building, I have this little Fendi crossbody that I'm never giving up because I love it. Um, and all of a sudden, when you start you know, I had all of this rack today. So you start with the rack, you start with the hangers, you get it all out of the closet, and then you start making outfits with it. So I had this little crossbody bag. So I got all my little crossbody bags out because they're so in style and I, you know, you don't wear them when they're tucked away in a drawer. And then this, again, the color, I really definitely use color strategically. This is like an echo scarf from Lord and Taylor from like, again, a hundred years ago. But this is how, you know, if this is too chilly, you just start to layer, like this is a shawl wrap. And I also wear this shawl wrap over all my wool coats. So that's another way to add style and flair. There's something about a shawl wrap that just makes you feel like a million bucks. Um, but those are my ideas. I hope one, two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five connected with you. I hope I motivated you to get into that coat closet, go through it, make piles, donations, Google coat drives. People need those coats. People are cold. Um, affiliate, make yourself feel good. Do a coat fit check make sure they fit go into your everyday wardrobe i usually do coats last because i want to see what people have and what their style is and what kind of coats they need and then read our blog for inspiration the photos are beautiful get some get your dog walking coat taken care of if you have a dog i know i can't even tell you the amount of people i have helped buy a dog walking coat for and then add what makes your heart sing and have a beautiful winter season because once it starts getting cold here, you're gonna be in those coats until probably April and having some color and prints and scarves and organizing your accessories in a way that really makes it easy to add that signature style is what it's about. So remember, outerwear should not be an afterthought and if you do it with some purpose and some intention and then get creative you too can have an amazing coat closet all right that's it for tonight i hope you all have a wonderful rest of the evening and remember i am always available for a chat a dm we have some awesome programs kicking off in the new year you've heard me mention thrive in style it's our brand new group program we're very very close to kicking that off we had some amazing feedback from the group that we took up to the equinox in vermont so we're incorporating some of their feedback but that is kicking off in january the next 90 days to stellar style is kicking off january 17th we sell gift certificates to that program we had a lot of people last year come in through gift certificates we can get on a phone call with you and we can help you decide if that program is right for you, if a one-on-one -on -one style consultation is right for you. If you just want to buy a smaller package to have one of our stylists go through your coat closet where you try everything on, they give you ideas of what works, what doesn't, what to add, what kind of accessories, we can do that as well. So that is our program for tonight. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you again next week. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.